Let's go over the addition, subtraction, and substitution postulates. First, let's start with the addition postulate. If equal quantities are added to equal quantities, the sums are equal. Okay, so let's look at that numerically. This means that 3 plus 5 is going to equal 5 plus 3. We have equal quantities, add its equal quantities. And we know that the sums of these will be the same. All right then, the substitution postulate, a quantity may be substituted for its equal in any expression. So in this example, 3 plus 5 we know is 8. So rather than writing 3 plus 5, we could substitute that with the number 8. And on this side, we know 5 plus 3 is 8, so we're going to substitute 8 in for 5 plus 3. So now the question is, how do we use this in our proofs? Well, we're going to look at this example. So let me get rid of this over here. And we'll look at an example. So let's say we're given that BC is congruent to ED. And we're asked in the question overall to prove that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle FEC. Right, this isn't only other this isn't the only given information, we're given other information too, but we're just going to focus on one aspect of this proof. So we look at the triangles, we have A, B, D, and we have triangle F E C. F E C. Alright. And we know that B C is congruent to ED. So this line segment here, BC, is congruent to this line segment, ED. Okay, that doesn't really give us enough information uh, just ha as it is to help prove that these triangles are congruent. Because this length BC and this length ED aren't actually sides of the triangle. BC is part of a side. BD is a side of the green triangle and EC is a side of the pink triangle, but we only have a portion of those sides. So how can we prove that, how can we use this at least to prove that this whole side is congruent to that whole side? Well, we're going to have to do a few steps. First thing you, you should notice is that in this side BD, we use CD. And in this side EC, we have CD as well. So there's an overlap here. We know that CD is congruent to DC because of the reflexive property. So in our statements and reasons, I'll just say we're at step three. I'm going to write that CD is congruent to DC. And that's the reflexive property. Okay, I'm going to use this given information that BC is congruent to ED. So now let's think about this logically. If we know that BC is congruent to ED and we know that CD is in both of them, then we should know that this part plus CD will equal this part plus DC. Let me just fix this. That should be a 3. And then the given information for this part is just that it's stated, it's given. Okay, so like I was saying, we know that this 
is congruent to this. So if we add this part to BC and add this part to ED, then those results will be congruent also. So now we could use our addition postulate and we could write that BC plus CD which will result in this is congruent to ED plus DC which will result in this. So combined this is a side of the triangle combined that's a side of the triangle. And this of course is the addition postulate. Alright, then last step, not of an entire proof, but of what we're doing here, is to substitute. We don't want to write B, C, and C, D. We don't want to keep it like that. We want to combine it and make it B, D. So B, C plus C, D results in B, D. So we can just substitute B, D in. So this is being substituted in for this part. Say so that's congruent to ED plus DC. So ED and DC is the same as EC. So this is EC is substituted in for this portion of the equation. And our reason is substitution postulate. So these steps uh, would be what would be necessary to be included in the proof in order to prove that BD is congruent to EC and we have that two sides of the triangle are now congruent. We'll take a look at this subtraction postulate which is pretty similar to the addition postulate. So the subtraction postulate states if equal quantities are subtracted from equal quantities the differences are equal. So if we had 9 minus 5 and 9 minus 5, the 9's are equal, the 5's are equal, therefore this expression would equal this expression. And afterwards we could use the substitution postulate to change this so that 9 minus 5 we know is 4, just substitute 4 in for this and substitute 4 in for that. But of course we want to apply this to a proof such as proving triangles congruent. So let's get rid of this and let's look at an example. So given this figure let's say we're told that or we're given that BD is congruent to EC. Let's take a look at that. BD and EC. Okay, you should notice that BD is not a side of the triangle and EC is not a side of this triangle. So if we want to prove these two triangles congruent, we can't just state that these are congruent, therefore we have congruent sides. However, part of BD, namely BC, is a side of the triangle, and a part of EC, namely ED, is part of this triangle. So if we could get rid of this part here from BD, we left with BC. 
And likewise, if we eliminate this part from EC, we'll be left with ED. So we're going to use the subtraction postulate to remove this and be left with the two sides of the triangles. So right now our statements and reasons. Okay, again, I'm just going to start at 3. We skip down a little bit. And we have that BD is congruent to EC. And that was given. From this diagram, we also know that this part that we want to subtract from them is congruent to itself because of the reflexive property. So we have CD is congruent to DC because of the reflexive property. Now we can write that this long line segment BD minus CD will equal this long line segment EC minus CD. So BD, this given side, minus CD is congruent to EC minus DC. And that is subtraction postulate. So again, subtraction postulate is if equal quantities are subtracted from equal quantities, the differences are equal. So equal quantities, BD, I'm sorry, CD and DC are subtracted from equal quantities, BD and EC are equal, then the difference, the differences of these two will also be equal. And now lastly, we're going to use substitution. So we could write that the actual size of the triangles are congruent. So BD minus CD is the same as BC. And EC minus DC, so getting rid of this part, will leave us with ED. So we know that BC is congruent to ED, substitution postulate.